NENA 2015 First Timer Orientation. Our presenter today is going to be uh, new, the newest NENA staff member, our PSAP Operations Director, Chris Carver. Uh, before we get started here, a few housekeeping notes. Um, we want you to uh, get the most out of this presentation as possible, so if you have any questions, please feel free to share them via the GoToWebinar interface, and we'll get to as many of those as we can towards the end of the broadcast. Also, uh, we are recording this webinar, so we'll send out a link to that archive that's going to be posted to the NINA YouTube channel, and uh, we'll get also get you a copy of the slide deck. And of course, if you have any questions that come up about the show uh, after the webinar is over, please feel free to email me or uh, anyone on the NINA staff, and we'll be happy to help you. And uh, before we get going with Chris here, I want to turn things over to our CEO, Brian Fonts, for uh, a brief uh, intro here. Thank you, Chris. My name is Brian Fonts. I'm the CEO of NINA. On behalf of NINA's board and staff, I welcome you to this webinar. More importantly, I hope this webinar provides you with valuable information that will make your journey to and stay in Denver uh, easier to deal with. We're grateful that you have chosen to come to NINA 2015 in Denver, Colorado. I'm pleased to introduce Chris Carver. As Chris Nussman had indicated, Chris Carver is our newest NINA staff. And when you listen to him, you'll know what I mean when I say he literally is, in many respects, the voice of 911. So Chris, I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Brian and Chris, for that wonderful introduction and uh, the, the good description, I think, of, of my role with NINA. Uh, first, thank you everybody for taking time out of your uh, busy day or whenever it is you're doing this uh, webinar to find out a little bit about what truly is an unbelievable opportunity for telecommunicators, dispatchers, supervisors, directors, and everybody else that works in the 911 community. Whether you're in a seat or whether you are a vendor or whether you're a stakeholder or anyone else whose lives are touched uh, by a 911 system each day in a professional capacity. Taking the opportunity to spend time at a conference is absolutely one of the best investments that you will make in your 911 career. So what we're here to do today is to provide you some initial kind of pointers about how to make sure that your first time at a conference is the start of what will hopefully be many wonderful times at conference. What you will find, of course, as all of us know in public safety, a little bit of planning goes a long way towards making sure that your experience is as good as it can possibly be. And that's no different for a 911 conference as it is for a shift in a 911 center or in a firehouse or on an ambulance or in a police car or anywhere else. So the first thing we would invite you to do is to take the time, for those of you that have smartphones, to download the NENA 2015 app that's available in iTunes and Google Play. If it should not be available at the moment you check, just check back uh, tomorrow or the next day. It should be available for everybody to download. That is your preeminent tool to organize what you're doing at the conference each day, to keep track of sessions, to keep track of events, uh, and the other things that are going on. One of the first things that everybody that's attending a NENA conference should understand is that it is not just great lectures occurring in breakout sessions in the conference hall. This is a absolutely full-ranged package of events designed to ensure that you have the best possible experience and learn the most you possibly can about what's going on in the world of 911 to help you go back to your center and do the best job that you possibly can, acquire the best training and tools that you possibly can, and acquire the best information that you possibly can. So it starts with the app, and the app you'll find, uh, like I said, in the App Store or on uh, Google Play. One of the things you also want to make sure you do that will just help out the process a lot more is before you leave home to get to Denver for the conference, take the time to print out what's referred to as your express check-in email. And your express check-in email will allow you to much more quickly go through the registration process. And that's our first chance really to meet you when you arrive in Denver and our chance to give you the information that you'll need to make the week a success. But even before the first session, the first formal sessions begin, you have a chance to really start making the world a better place through your participation in our second uh, Friends of 911 5K Run or Walk. 
This event occurring on Sunday morning is a chance to raise money and awareness for 911 related issues and to really spend a really great time uh, with friends and cohorts and coworkers in the 911 community uh, doing something that's great not only for the community but for ourselves. So this run is able to be registered for at the friend the location you'll see on the on the screen actually friends of 911.org uh, forward slash run. And then you can also make, if you want, you can make up teams and participate together. And we encourage everyone to do that and get as many folks out as we can. I know it's really early, uh, 7 a.m. on a Sunday morning, but it's for a great cause. And the best part of it is it's early enough in the day that you still have the opportunity to take advantage of everything else going on that same day as well. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we go along. So also, before you leave, just some things to think about. For those of you that don't travel often, especially by air, just remember with the security concerns that are ongoing in the United States today, especially in terms of travel, that there are a couple of restrictions and policies and procedures that will impact your ability uh, to travel by air into Denver or any other American airport. The first is you want to make sure you get to the airport early. Uh, about two hours before your scheduled departure time should allow you to overcome any challenges that may exist, work your way through any lines of security. Uh, you know, be routed to the right place and to deal with any other challenges that may that may come along. If you are only bringing a carry-on bag, you should also know about uh, a very important rule regarding liquids. You're only allowed to bring those travel-sized or even a slightly smaller containers through security in your checked on in your uh, carry-on baggage. Excuse me. If you have anything larger than that and you bring try to bring it through the security checkpoint they're going to make you throw it out and that includes water so for example don't buy a two liter of water or any other liquid right before you're going to go through security they're not going to let you take it through uh, save that kind of purchase for when you get through on the other side for any carry-on uh, liquids that you do try to bring that are in those small containers it's uh, requested that you put those in a clear bag and then you actually will pull that out of your luggage you'll put it in the the bin and that will get x-rayed separately. That just makes the whole process work a lot better uh, and ensures that they can scan and, and make sure that uh, everything is safe that you're trying to bring through in your carry-on luggage. So hopefully you'll end up, I, I think the vast majority of you will end up at the Denver International Airport. That's where we're all trying to go. Uh, one thing you'll find is that Denver is a very new, very modern, and very large airport. Uh, there will be a train process involved likely to get you from wherever it is that you land, depending on the airline that you come in, to bring you into the main terminal. Once you get to the main terminal, uh, then you'll find your bags, depending uh, on whether or not which airline you're in is which one of the, air, the actual uh, baggage carousels you'll go to to pick up your bags. And then you'll have to worry about ground transportation uh, downtown. And, and really, it's not a worry at all. There are several options. Uh, straight taxi cab uh, from the airport to downtown is at flat rate. You see on the screen there are $55.57. There's a couple of other options as well. Nina has a discount arranged through Super Shuttle, especially if you have a couple of you that are arriving at the same time. This is a great way to get from the airport to downtown. If you are adventurous and you want to have your own car for the week, we also have a program with Avis, and you can use the discount code that you see there as well, uh, book online or by phone, to take advantage of any one of those discounts. So once you are at your hotel, uh, make sure you mention to them when you check in that you are there for the NINA conference. It just kind of helps them to be aware of, you know, you're, not only are you from out of town, which of course you probably are if you're staying at a hotel, but you're a very important visitor. They are excited to have us coming. Denver is a great city, and it's uh, very, very hospitable. And they are aware that there's a large contingent of 911 folks that are going to be in town. And that will give them a chance to say thank you or maybe whatever other programs they have there in the hotel. They also are your first best resource on directions, on any food recommendations that you might want, or any other information that you may be able to provide. They're there to help and make sure that you use them for that purpose. So once you are at your hotel, one of the first things you want to make sure you know how to do is get from your hotel to the convention center. Most of the activities, but not all, related to the NINA conference will be occurring uh, somewhere in or around or very close to uh, the convention center in downtown Denver. You'll find, and we've tried to do a good job with the map here, and I, I hope it expresses quite clearly where everything is that we'll be doing primarily. 
the lobby area, that lower lobby A, is actually where our registration booth will be. Uh, we'll talk a little more about that here in just a little bit. Keynotes, other events, are one level down in that Four Seasons Ballroom. The, expo, the actual sessions, the breakout sessions, are on the street level in the 100 and 200 hallways. And then the expo hall is actually above. It's one level up, and that's via the Lobby A escalators. There will be tons of signs around, and one of the things, and I'll mention this a couple times through this entire presentation, NINA staff, NINA volunteers, our NINA executive board members, everyone is there to make sure that you have a great experience. So as much as we can cover stuff through this particular webinar, when we get there, we don't expect you to remember it all, and there certainly is not going to be a quiz on arrival. So if there's something you forget, if you have a problem, a concern, an issue, a suggestion, uh, I'm absolutely loving this, or maybe you could do something a little bit better, please take the time, find us, share. We're all going to be wearing name tags. We'll be easily identifiable. Please come up, say hello, introduce yourselves, and take the opportunity to let us know if there are any, any suggestions, any comments, any concerns that you may have. So. When you do get to the convention center itself, and it's time to register, and you'll see that there's a wide range of times in which the registration desk will be open, starting early on Saturday morning and proceeding all the way through Wednesday afternoon. When you get there, you'll come down to the lower level, Lobby A. You'll see the booth there will look very much like the bottom of the screen that we have up in front of you right now. You'll go over to a computer station scan in your check-in email, or if you forgot or didn't bring your check-in email or weren't able to print it, you can actually type in your last name, and that will allow you to print your badge, your event tickets, and your trail bag voucher. So you're going to get a whole bunch of stuff right when you first arrive at the conference. Make sure you take the chance, make, the, make sure, excuse me, you take the time to look through it. There's a lot of beneficial information there and things you'll find useful for the duration, not only of the week, but when you get home as well. One of the other things you should definitely do, you'll find ribbons that you can decorate your convention badge with. Make sure that you use and take your first-timer ribbon amongst all the others that you are qualified for and display that quite proudly because that gives us as staff an indication that you're a first-timer. We might take a little bit of extra time when we see you passing in the halls to stop and say hello and ask how your experience is going. One of the next opportunities that you will have uh, close to the registration area is to visit the Nina Camp store where you can pick up your commemorative trail bag that will have those items in it that I just referenced. You will also be provided at that time your program guide. Now there is a program guide that's available now on the website but the guide that you'll receive actually when you register is the full package guide that allows you to really plan the best use of your week and where you want to focus your time uh, during that period. And it will reflect also of course what's in the app. And you can check out the digital version of the conference program and expo guide on Nina's website at the location that's listed on the bottom of this slide. So even though the conference itself uh, gets started uh, late Sunday and Monday, there are still, there's still a lot to do even before the official kickoff of the conference. We talked about the 911, the run for 911, which is a wonderful wonderful event and a great, uh, a great opportunity to both meet friends and, and raise funds for a very important cause. But we also offer training beginning on Saturday. We have pre-conference courses that will start on Saturday and also on, uh, there will also be pre-conference courses on Sunday that are the best way to get full day educational opportunities out of your conference experience. These pre-conference courses are offered by truly the best instructors in the 911 business. These are folks that are truly well-versed in the topics they teach, teaching courses that have been designed and customized for 911 professionals with modern you know, 2015 911 realities in mind. They are absolutely the best investment you can make with your dollar at the conference if you're arriving early. And we strongly encourage you to register, uh, if you haven't done so already, for at least one and hopefully two of our all-day pre-conference courses. In addition to uh, the conference, the pre-conference courses being instructed by NINA instructors, we are also offering uh, PSAP tours. For those of you that haven't been to conferences before, one of the most amazing parts of any conference is seeing how other folks do things. Uh, one of the great truths of the 911 world is, is that we're all pretty much in a similar boat. 
uh, but some of us have different oars and some of us have different sails and maybe some paint our boat differently than others. And just little things that you can pick up from PSAP tours and visiting other places may be the solution for a problem you've long had in your 911 center and just didn't quite look at it the same way as somebody else. And likewise, it's a two-way street. Maybe you have a solution for somebody else that they never thought of. And that really is the whole point of the conference. It's getting like-minded professionals from what is truly an amazing industry together in an environment where we can learn and grow and share and talk and help to really grow, continue the growth of 911 into the profession that we all know that it is. So on Sunday, after the run for 911, later on that afternoon begins our membership meeting, followed by our award ceremony and our welcome reception. The welcome reception actually occurs just a couple blocks away from the actual convention center at the Denver Athletic Club. That's an exciting night that features a whole bunch of people seeing, you know, seeing their friends for the first time maybe in about a year and really sharing with the newcomers what it means to be at conference. There will be activities offered there from bowling to billiards, but also just the start of a week of friendship and camaraderie amongst fellow 911 professionals. Monday will feature in the morning our regional breakfast where uh, members of NINA that are at the conference and of course first timers as well will attend a breakfast where we organize by the geographic area in which our membership is in the organization. This allows us to interact with those that might be part of our local NINA chapter or that are part of our local NINA region. In addition to that, we will have a keynote session. That will be Olympic gold medalist Amy Van Dyken. The Expo Hall will be open that day, and that also starts our formal breakouts. There will be a canine demonstration on the exhibition floor. And then that night, there will be a young professionals mixer. For those that are 40-ish or 40-ish at heart, uh, that's a general rule. By no means is there going to be an ID check at the door, but it's an opportunity for some of our younger 911 professionals that are maybe just starting out or just kind of at that point in their career uh, to to mingle and talk about the challenges they face and the strategies they have as they're building their 911 career. That event will also occur off-site. It won't be quite at the convention center, but it'll be close by at the Wincop Brewing Company, which is about two blocks away. So Tuesday also features a full program of events, coffee and donuts in the morning with the exhibitors. Our keynote session that day uh, features astronaut Mike Massimino. That day also has another opportunity for 911 professionals to give back to the community and to, to really help a valuable and very important cause through a blood drive. The breakout sessions will also be, uh, occur on that day. And that day we also have our Prize of Palooza, which we'll show a slide of just in a little bit. For those of you that are emergency number professionals, the leadership reception will occur on that day as well. And a little bit of a plug for the EMP program. For those of you that haven't done so already, the EMP or the Emergency Number Professional Exam and Certification Program is one of the best investments you can possibly make in your career. It allows you to demonstrate both to yourself and the 911 community that you have obtained a level of knowledge and skill that really is the pinnacle of the 911 industry. So that is one of the many topics uh, that will be covered on the exhibition floor that you can see about at the NINA booth. Uh, I encourage you to obtain materials and brochures and, and learn about what ENP is and how you can participate in the process to obtain your certification. So we have our Booth Bingo event as well. The Booth Bingo event is a way to encourage you to visit uh, the vendors who are expressed or shown on the bingo card. Get your card stamped. And what you do, once you have all those stamps, is you drop the card completed off at Booth 906 and then come back later, at the, the time will be posted there, for you to see what prize you've won. Uh, but beyond just the ones that are on the card, it's also really a motivation to see all of our vendors. One of the most important things you can do on the hall, on the hall floor, is to just stop and say hi to, every, to as many of the vendors as you possibly can, who are there offering new products, new services, and information that oftentimes we're not even aware of. Uh, there are many is the time in my career that I've seen about a product that I didn't even know existed that would have helped in my center, but I didn't know about it until the time I actually got to see it on the exhibit floor. So I strongly encourage you to take the time out to see that as well. 
On Wednesday, we'll have some uh, additional breakout sessions. That's the last full day of the conference. We'll have our chapter leadership forum for those of you that are involved in your local chapters. And then we have our networking lunch and our networking keynote featuring Mike McKinley. One of the things that you'll want to look out for when you sit at that luncheon, it's another networking uh, opportunity. So the seating is, is generally suggested to be by your role in the 911 industry. This allows folks that might have very similar challenges or opportunities to discuss those while at this very, very important event. And then lastly, you'll have the installation reception, which is your chance to see the new board of NINA uh, installed into their new roles. NINA is truly a membership-driven organization. It depends on volunteers and professionals who really are passionate about what 911 is, what it does, and what it can be. And although you'll see the executive board for now installed in that installation reception, hopefully many of you will look upon that ceremony and see a future opportunity for you to get involved in the organization in some capacity. On Thursday, which, um, excuse me, on Thursday we'll have our executive board open meeting for those that are remaining in town. And then for those that are able to stay, we'll also have free workshops. There will be a railroad incident management workshop, a TURT team leader fast track, and an active assailant workshop from the International Academies of Emergency Dispatch. If you have the opportunity to hang around town for that extra day, these are all wonderful opportunities for education and training, again, as the overall part of NINA's 2015 Denver Conference. So, as we said, make sure you visit as many vendors as you can. But also, no matter whether you're inside the conference hall visiting vendors or whether you're on the walk to the first uh, on the walk to the Young Professionals Mixer or just out exploring Denver, remember you'll want to dress comfortably, but you're also representing our profession. So we respectfully ask that everybody dress as they would want to be perceived as a professional, but be comfortable. So that's kind of an important thing to think about. We also want to make sure that you carry an ample supply of business cards. Uh, it might seem a little bit old-fashioned, but it's a great way to pass along your information to all the new friends and new prof fellow professionals in the 911 world that you're going to meet at this event. Make sure you stay hydrated. Denver isn't called the Mile High City for nothing, so make sure you keep bottled water with you at all times, and avail yourself of the many beverage and food opportunities that will be present at the conference. During the breakout sessions at various times, there will be water and things offered, but you'll want to uh, make sure that you maintain that throughout the entire day. Again, our volunteers and our staff are there to help. The volunteers will be wearing those yellow shirts with the blue lettering. Please feel free to ask them anything you might need. You'll also want to make sure you look out for staff. We're generally the ones with the name tags, uh, walking around very busily, trying to make sure everything is going well. We're also there to be of service to you as well. You also want to make sure that you pick up your commemorative conference lapel pin in the visitor center so that you can commemorate for years uh, going forward that this was your first conference and hopefully not your last. So we also encourage you to use social media to share about your experience at the conference. Uh, take photos of your friends, post them up uh, both on uh, Twitter and on Facebook. There are hashtags and there are uh, tags available as you'll see on the slide. There are prizes that are going to be awarded each day for the top tweeter. We also encourage you, for those that are interested in the education programming and in NINA uh, as an organization, to like our Facebook pages. There are two. There is a NINA 911 Association Facebook page, and there's also a NINA Education and Training Facebook page. We encourage you to take the time to like those pages now so that you can see basically what's to come as we share over the coming week information about the presentations, programs, and training that will be offered in Denver. So that's uh, both NINA Facebook pages we would encourage you to like, both our traditional NINA 911, edu 911 Association Master Facebook page and our NINA 911 Education and Training Facebook page as well. So make sure you dress for hot and cold. Uh, the temperatures inside, a, much like a 911 center, the temperatures inside the conference center and the convention center and the expo hall floor can fluctuate pretty wildly. You want to make sure your devices are fully charged. You're probably going to be taking a lot of notes and looking up a lot of things. That will make things a lot easier. There are charging stations available, uh, including the NINA charging post across from registration should you need it. Wi-Fi access for those that uh, uh, will be 
in the conference center. They're public spaces, and street-level meeting rooms all have a complimentary Wi-Fi network, which you can log into by checking out your web browser, browser excuse me, and then following the connection instructions. Also, one of the things you, that you can do that will really help us help you for 2016 and beyond is to share your comments in the survey section. Please let us know what worked, what didn't, what you thought went well, and what you'd like to see more of as we go forward. And one of the most important things about that is if you have a great time, please make sure you share it. Uh, there are well over 150,000 911 professionals in this country and many more folks that work in fire, police, EMS, that work as our vendors, in other words, that are our 911 community. And we would love to see as many of them as our conference, at our conferences as possible. And that starts by us sharing uh, the experiences that we have so that hopefully next year and beyond we can have even larger groups of folks uh, attend the conferences, share their experiences, and we can learn and grow uh, even more than we will this year at 2015 in Denver. So also one of the things to remember is that the, uh, the Live Learning Center, if you miss a, miss a session or want to share something, the Live Learning Center is an invaluable education tool all year round and it's included with your registration. You will receive an email after the conference that will show you how to log into there so that you can go back and look at maybe a breakout that you took and really wanted to share or review, uh, excuse me again, or something that you maybe, there were three or four sessions at once and you wanted to make sure you just couldn't be in three or four places at one time. So that's exactly what the Live Learning Center is for. If you want to get out and explore Denver, uh, which is a wonderful thing to do if you have free time, one of the things to remember is that Denver actually has a very large entertainment district that's very close to where the convention center is. That's known as the 16th Street Mall. Uh, the area of restaurants and bars and other attractions kind of goes off of that in a couple directions. But there is free transportation that runs up and down that street, uh, the 16th Street Free Mall Ride. That shuttle runs from 5 a.m. to 1 a.m. Now, one of the things that you also want to do, though, if there's a really a very hot restaurant that you want to check out while you're there, or some other experience, if at all possible, you want to make reservations beforehand. It just makes things easier. There are multiple conventions going on in Denver at the same time, and will help ensure that you have the best experience possible. Beyond the mall that's there close to the conference center, or the convention center, excuse me, there is also Denver's light rail system, an easy way to explore Denver if you don't have a rental car. Uh, that stops, there are several stops located close to where we will be at the convention center. Uh, there are free maps available and it will explain basically the cost and the fare structure. And that's one good tool to get out and explore Denver. Uh, this is a long way out. The forecast for the period that the conference will go as of now is showing very good weather, just a little hot. Highs in the upper 80s and low 90s. Of course, keep in mind that could change. Uh, but also keep in mind that it is Denver and it is the summer and we are 5,000 feet up. So the likelihood of it being pretty warm and needing to wear comfortable clothes is, is very, very, very good. As you'll see on this particular slide as well, there's also a lot of other information that's available out there, whether you look at denver.org uh, slash Nina, forward slash Nina, which is a Convention of Visitors Bureau page, the Denver Post, Thrillist Denver, there's a tremendous number of opportunities. Denver is a great city to visit. And we have no doubt that you're going to have a great time. But one of the greatest things that you'll do isn't just the restaurant that you'll visit or the breakout session that you're going to take that will possibly change your whole career for the better, or a keynote speaker that will inspire you, or a vendor that will show you a product that your center may absolutely fall in love with. Even though all of those are absolutely great things, what will really change your career in your life are the friends that you will make at a 911 related conference. The NINA conference will provide you the chance to really interact with and get to know your fellow 911 professionals from all around the world. Having people like that to talk to, to share stories with, to ask for advice from, to maybe talk about a bad day with, those are some of the greatest, greatest tools that any 911 professional can have. And that is one of the best side effects of coming to a NINA conference, and one that we encourage you to really make the most of. So if there's somebody sitting at a table that you don't know, take 30 seconds to introduce yourself. 
see someone wearing a shirt from an agency that may be in your county or in your area of the state, say hello. That might be somebody that you can become career-long friends with. If there's somebody that's teaching a breakout session that you attended that you absolutely loved it, ask for their card. Ask for a copy, perhaps, of their presentation. These are the sorts of opportunities that you'll find in Denver at the NENA conference. And those are the sorts of opportunities that can truly change your career for the good. And we encourage you to make the most of them. At this point, we'd like to open it up for questions, and hopefully we can provide some answers. We'd also like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's first time or webinar, which is AT&T. And absolutely, positively, we look forward to seeing you all in Denver. We wish you safe travels. We wish you the best of experiences and hope that we have the chance to be not just your first time, but your first of many times attending a NENA, a NENA conference. So thank you all very much for attending, and we'll open the floor now. Chris? Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, while we uh, wait for some questions to come in, uh, if you want to enter those through the, the GoToWebinar interface, we'll be happy to answer those. We have some time here. I'm just going to turn it back over to Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Chris Nussman and Chris Carver. For someone who's attended a number of NENA conferences, each one is very exciting. The technologies and services that you see on the exhibit hall floor, the partners that we have in the industry there uh, that provide information that is not only current but future thinking, if you will, is amazing. And oftentimes folks that attend those uh, exhibit hall uh, briefings and meetings will have an opportunity to bring back to their 911 centers information that may play into discussions on a going forward basis as plans for improvements and changes occur. So I encourage you strongly to spend time on the exhibit hall floor. In most conferences, exhibit halls are just for a day or a day or two. So I encourage you to make sure that you build in your schedule times to come down and talk to our industry partners to learn more about their products and services so that uh, you may be able to be more informed and educated and to be a, a better contributing member back in your home. Uh, peace out. Also, what Chris Carver talked about in terms of just the opportunity to meet new people uh, and become friends with individuals who are like-minded in this profession is absolutely enjoyable. The first-timer breakfast, uh, excuse me, I said first-timer breakfast, the uh, regional breakfasts uh, are an opportunity to meet folks within your region that have been in the profession for a while and those like yourself who may have been in the profession for a while but this is your first conference or in fact uh, they too are relatively new to 911. So this is a great opportunity to get to know folks within your region and we're having this early in the conference so that throughout the conference you will be running into these people in sessions and hallways and it's an opportunity just to get to know people that work uh, in your region. Great. Thanks, Brian. We do have a couple questions here. The first is, uh, when will the fast check-in email be sent? Um, that should be coming your way uh, this coming Monday, the 22nd, so check your inboxes for that on Monday. Uh, next question, are there any special credentials or RSVPs needed for the ENP and leadership reception? Uh, if you're an ENP or a chapter leader, you will automatically get a ticket for that event. So when you print out your uh, name badge or registration, you'll get a bunch of tickets. If you're an EMP or a chapter leader, you'll get uh, a ticket for that. Uh, another question, how many breakouts are there? Uh, there are more than 90 breakouts. Uh, I think off the top of my head, I think there are 94 breakouts this year. So um, there are 11 different tracks on uh, Monday, 11 tracks on Tuesday, and then 10 tracks on Wednesday. So. A lot, of, uh, a lot of chances to uh, learn and grow in the profession. Um, another question about the mobile app. Uh, it's not linked on the NINA website. Uh, it is going to be in the Apple Store and in Google Play. We're waiting for final approval on those. But if uh, you just check back early next week and search for NINA 2015, uh, that you should get the app and uh, you'll be good to go. And we'll also be sending out an email to all registered attendees as we get closer to the event with uh, additional details, and we'll mention the app again, and you'll see that email when the app is live. Um, another question, is lunch included with the conference? Uh, 
there is the networking lunch on Wednesday that uh, includes lunch. On Monday morning, there's the uh, the regional breakfast. So those are the two uh, main food functions. Um, there's also coffee and donuts with the exhibitors on Tuesday morning, but Wednesday is the only uh, lunch function. Uh, we're still available. If anyone else has questions, uh, we'll hang on for uh, another minute here. Um, and so just for the question on food, uh, within the convention center itself, there is a, a snack bar restaurant at the very uh, entryway to the conference center itself. And then on the expo hall itself, there will be places where food can be uh, purchased. And then outside the convention center, there's a variety of places uh, where you can grab lunch uh, very close by. Uh, and another question about uh, this presentation. Uh, yes, we are going to be sending an email to you uh, shortly. You'll see something from me, Chris Nussman, that'll include a link to the archive of this webinar on our YouTube channel, as well as a copy of this slide deck for your reference. And as I said, um, you know, you'll have that email from me. If you have any questions, just hit reply, and I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions you have about the show. All right. Well, I want to uh, thank everyone for joining us today, and also thanks again to our wonderful webinar sponsor, AT&T, for their uh, gracious and generous support of this webinar as well as the conference. And of course, we want to thank all our conference sponsors who uh, you'll see posted throughout the convention center in Denver. So without them, we couldn't make this happen. So big thanks to them. Thanks to Brian, our CEO. Thanks to uh, Chris Carver and all the NINA staff and also the board members who joined us on this call, and we look forward to seeing you in Denver in a little more than a week. Thanks, everyone.